Hello to each and every one of you that are watching me here. Let me know in the chat if you can hear me. I want to make sure that you are able to hear me. Put in the chat, I hear you well. I can hear you very good. I'm about to have a conversation about what I saw online from gospel singer hit maker. I'm pretty sure you sing one of his songs at church. I am 100% sure that you sing one of his songs at church. Ernest Pew, and we are going to talk to him right now. So go ahead and let everybody know. You can copy this link and send it to everybody in your phone and let them know that Ernest Pew is about to come on and explain to us what he said. And we're just going to go back and forth and, and bounce around some ideas. Okay? Here he is. He's up here now. I'm about to bring him on. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Hi, Ernest Pew. How are you doing today? Man, I'm working hard today. Not hard as you. Uh, I'm working hard. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm very interested to have this conversation. I want to read what you said um, online. Let me see if I can go to it because you made this post and it was so funny that you made a post because I actually talked about the Stella Awards last night. We sort of have conflicting views, but this is what Ernest Pugh said. He said, a moment of transparency, by the way, my platform and my view. Basically, I'm going to say what I got to say that y'all come over here wearing me. Because it's <laughs> <laughs> right. He said, well, if there was ever a time to pivot from industry to ministry, that moment is here for me, Keith. He said, for me. He said, the Gospel Hip Hop Awards, formerly known, I love the shade, <laughs> formerly known as the Stella Awards, have given us a clear indication where the focus of their platform and its audience lies. They have sent a clear message to those of us who have been in the gospel music industry for 15 to 20 years that they're no longer needed, wanted, or welcomed on their stages anymore. Perhaps the powers that be feel feel pressured by sponsors and advertisers to adorn the gospel with an element of entertainment, but whatever the case, the writing is on the wall, and do not plan, I do not plan to sit around and await my demise. Please understand, as a creative, I will forever create music and release it into the earth and affect the flow of worship because by no means can these systems of the world stop destiny and the purpose is simply time to differentiate between industry and ministry. I promise to keep the main thing, the main thing, which is to advance the kingdom of God, not agendas that are rooted in idolatry and greed, viewership ratings. My heart goes out to all the forerunners who have been silenced on various platforms in which they contributed time, energy, and resources for decades. Sadly, it's the end of an era and the beginning of a new movement. Those of us who are wise, major in ministry and minor in industry, it's all good and it's all God. Now, when I read this, I said, now, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, my God. I said, because I'm going to tell you, one of the things I admire about people like you who take to their social media, I say the same thing about James Fortune and Isaac Kareem who come to their platform and they address what is currently happening on TV or TV on social media and they speak on, you know, their unfiltered opinion. So I'm glad that you did that because now I can ask some questions. Did, uh -oh. you, did you not like that the Stella Awards last night really looked and sounded a lot like the BET Awards, the Hip Hop Awards, and the other award shows. What was it you didn't you didn't like about that? Because that's what it sounded like to me. <clears throat> well, uh, first of all, I want to just thank you for this amazing platform that you use uh, to give voice to a lot of uh, people like me who we we say what some people are thinking, and you kind of give voice to that and allow us to do that. So, first of all, I want to thank you for that. Um, you know, I, I respect art. And, and I love all genres of music. I have two children who are 28 and 30, so I'm always listening to trap and hip-hop and some, even R&B. So 
I have a respect just for art, but I just feel like when we say gospel, the biggest night in gospel, and we say stellar awards, um, I'm looking at it from a point of we don't have to be the hip hop. And because, because believe it or not, when they do the BET awards, they have a segment where they give space and they honor gospel music. So I just don't feel like why we need to have something as special as the gospel. In bad times, people need to hear good news. And I get it. However you can present it, we should present it. But I think because that's our night that we define as the biggest night in gospel, why can't we level the playing field of where we're hearing from people who do praise and worship, even a little CCI, a little quartet, a little choir? Why? That's our night. So I don't know why we have to be defined by this element of entertainment and feel like we need to just uh, silence a community of people who have been around for like several years and you've made a lot of money off of us. But it's like now you need to do certain things, I guess, to appeal to your sponsors. And to me, I don't feel like we're showing the full picture of what the church looked like. If I had a drone and I was going through a church and all I saw was the kids in the back <clears throat> on their cell phones, I'm not seeing the front part of the church. And at one point, this was real special. We were not trying to be like anybody else. Remember the Bobby Jones show? Everybody came on that show. And I always have believed that church music works on church people. And so I just feel like if you no longer want the church people to pay attention, then take away all the artists that they've listened to for, for decades. And there you have it. And let me ask you this. Do, do you think, I mean, because I went live and I talked about the Stella Wars and I was praising the Stella Wars because for so long, you know, because I'm a pastor and an entertainer. So I'm on Co both correct. sides. So I have always felt, oh my God, look at us. Why aren't we presenting what we do we we can do more than holland scream we we Correct. can dress better i know we have the potential <clears throat> the publicists you know our mix and our sound our lighting our staging can be better excellent and, and to me this year well like <laughs> yeah we looking good i mean because you flip through the channel you couldn't tell that that was gospel um, Stella Awards because it looked on the same level as B everything that comes on BET. So I praise that. But I'm hearing what you're saying because I'm a church boy and an old school church boy. So I hear what you're saying. So with that being said, can't we do both? I mean, because in my opinion, I remember when I was um, nominated for a Stella Award that there isn't room for quartet the, the choir almost disappeared, but they did show up this year in honor of Ricky Dillard. But can't we do both? Can't we do all of what they did last night at the same time? Pay homage to the, the, the foundation that built the Stella Awards and that built gospel music? Yeah, and, and I want to I wanna just say one other thing. This is by no means, my post was not to bash Central City Productions, Don Jackson. That platform is powerful. I've ministered on it. I've been featured on the Stellar. As you can see behind me, I've been nominated about 16 times uh, on the Stellar. That platform has laid eyes on me and done great things. But what I'm saying is, yes, we can do both. But I feel that we are pressured to say that. And, and my thing is, are you going to believe in the the audience that you're that you're going for? Or are you going to safely trust in the fact that there is a, if I put Shirley Caesar on there, Shirley's fan base is going to tune in. If, yeah. I, if, if I put a Byron Cage on there, if I put any a Beverly Crawford on there, because we live for the Beverly Crawford moment, just as that audience is looking for the lights, the camera, the action, the hats, the skinny jeans, the t-shirts and the hat, I think we're saying we don't care what you say. And the proof is in the pudding. Go back and look at the ratings from the Hip Hop Awards and the B&T, and then go look at the, the, the ratings for what we had last night. And you tell me, did you accomplish your goal? Because you, a lot of people that I was looking even on your post, they said they turned to TV. You won't That's get credit true. for that for that viewership. So did you accomplish what you meant to accomplish or should you rethink it and allow the fan base to still have an option to see their favorite artists on there? That's all I'm saying. And please, can we please keep, I'm by no means hating because I didn't get nominated. I haven't released the album since the pandemic in 20, to, in 2000. So I wasn't looking to be nominated. I wasn't looking to get, I really wasn't looking to perform on there, any of the above. I was making an observation, Larry, based on the fact that I'm 56 years old this year. And at 20 years in the military, I did the same thing. I said, I've been here 20 years. I got promoted quick. I got a pivot. I pivoted to the gospel music industry. I'm looking at 21 years over here. If the writing is on the wall and it looks like I'm not needed, I'm not wanted, what am I going to do? 
I'm pivoting somewhere else. Somebody else may want to stay 20 more years. I don't wait around. I bust a move. Mm. Yeah, you know, and, and, and I hear that. And and I even said on the line, I said, well, where was Charlotte? You know, and, and I missed, there, there, there's never been a proper representation, in my opinion, even the year, I think, 15 when I was nominated. I so there, it, it wasn't a good representation. So I think they tried to represent mm. the rappers and, and other contemporary artists, and it was a hard, yeah, you know, in, in your opinion, a hard left turn. You know, in my in my opinion, um, I think it was it was good. But I hear what you're saying, and you're making sense. Yeah. I think we should do segments. If it's if it's our night, then why can't you have? If you got say sixty minutes, why can't you have ten minutes of hip hop? 10 minutes of praise and worship, 10 minutes of quartet, 10, and just say this with it, this an oldie but goodie. We had the Williams brothers who have done this for 50 years. They never call not one Williams brother. We have, we have quartets and people who have built Motown. We have probably about a great number of artists that have been affiliated with that Motown label that were in that room on Sunday night. For you to not call the Williams brothers name, and they, they're doing a uh, for for uh, uh, a farewell tour, so if we were gonna honor somebody, I mean, I'm glad for who they honored, but I mean, can we be a little bit more inclusive? And this is the main reason why I make this point. Not for my for me. First of all, gospel music and singing on the road is not my main source of income. Let me just preface it by saying that. The sec the second thing I want to just say is when we come out here and try to to uh, uh, get visibility and exposure to move your body of work. It is impossible to do so without the vehicle of radio, retail outlets, and television appearances. So if you're going to be in it and you're in it to win it, you're going to need the vehicle of that television. So what I'm saying, if we're all trying to eat and we're all trying to propel our body of work, then you got to open the door for the older people that have been around for decades to still be able to make good on their investment as well. That's all I'm saying. And I love the evolution of music. I love the fact that you can stream my music on digital platforms. I love it. But at the same time, I would love for my fan base to get to see me on a platform. Thank God for Bobby Cartwright and the, uh, and the uh, Superfest, because if it were not for that pro, pro, uh, platform, I don't know where we would go. Yeah. I, and of the artists that you name, I know all those artists, and, and I would love for those artists to be introduced to the new to the new generation. But I think one of the things that the Stella Wars don't, has done is really good. I, I I agree with what you're saying. Yeah, it was so bad when I used to review and do commentary on Stella Wars, and I do it on every in sixteen and seventeen. I was doing it on every award show, but then when it came to us. I'm like, dog, oh, our outfits are terrible on the red carpet. The music is terrible. <laughs> the mix is bad. Why they put that artist in that? It's horrible. But this year, even Ja'Kalen, she wore something that a lot of church people didn't like. But I, I see that at the Met she Gala. She's doing her thing. Yeah, I see that at the Met Gala. I see it on the runway. So I got it. I said, we're moving in the right direction. I a little agree. late. We're a little late. But we're yeah. moving in the right direction but at the same time we're doing that what i'm hearing you saying is let's not forget the foundation and make right. sure we balance it because you guys really built it you the, that the church you your songs is what we sing at church most of the stuff we hear on the radio we just stream it and play but the, the choirs and stuff at church can't sing this stuff we ain't got the soprano <laughs> we, we ain't got the, yeah. this, this you know but I it's not what, even about me but i just i my heart went out to we just lost Sean Pace Rhodes. Uh, I didn't hear any mention of Sean Pace Rhodes. We were in Atlanta. That's a so problem. If you, that's a problem. Yeah. If you have the pulse of the industry and not 20 miles away from where you're hosting the Stellars, we don't mention Duranis or LaShawn Pace Rhodes. That's a I problem. just feel like, I don't feel like we have the pulse and I feel like we're going after, we're being, we're being manipulated by ratings and I think we're losing the sensitivity of what we were. When it started, it was all about this paying homage to things in the gospel. We're making it, in other words, we're deferring to them to tell us how to do what we know we were put in the earth to do. And it's, it's for money. It's got to be just for money. But I'm like, 
I, I just don't understand why that we just lost something that was special. And I don't feel like we all of we lost it. Sure, Jane Fortune, them, oh my God, th those guys, uh, Pastor Mike, them, they brought the noise. And for me, it's all about global reach. My nephews who are from, on, they from the hood, they don't understand, I need your glory, rain. They like, oh, give me, and it's gonna be, and you know, so we're giving global reach. But what I'm saying is let's widen this and let's, let's level this playing field and let's welcome all these other things. You can let the people vote for who they want if you want to. But I just feel like let's keep the element of the choir. Thank God for Ricky Dillard because it hadn't been for Ricky. Yeah. I was like, okay, are we going to have some Holy Ghost anywhere in here? Uh, so thank God for Ricky Dillard. And, uh, and of course, a sap when he did his tribute thing, but yeah. I was getting nervous there, and I was getting nervous because I also, you know, working in the in the behavioral science, I deal with a lot of the secular people. Right. So they were even like, "Well, now who is this person?" And I was like, "To be I, honest with you, I don't know who it is." But see, that's but, <laughs> but see, I said this is where we agree at. But let me repeat myself. Like I said in the show last night, I love that. Still, it was in my opinion was the best ever in the in the in the stance of the production and the production was amazing. We Flawless. were competing with every other show out there. The lighting was off yeah, the chain. I mean, that cool. lighting, the stage, I, some of them I didn't know could dance. I was like, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> but I agree with you because where we come from and what built us and brought us here, we, we, didn't, hear, uh, we didn't hear that kind of sound. That, yeah. the, and that's really the ministry of gospel music. Last night was the industry of gospel music because it's the advertisers and it's the, the people who want to buy the spots during the show. It's the collaborations with other people who are not church people who ain't even say don't know nothing about gospel and who right. ain't black. There you, know, you go. So, so Tesla, I, Tesla would be like, you're going to have to give me a little bit. I got to think of Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion if I'm going to drop this half a million dollars on you. So, okay, I, I may adhere to that and be like, okay, now that is, but I still got to be true to the element. If I'm going to call it the biggest night in gospel, then it ought to feel like what the gospel is. It ought to feel like Sunday morning. To, and I'm not saying everything has to be Jesus, 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 Jesus. We know it. But I should feel the presence at some point that God has come in that room and visited me. And let, and let me say this, because I don't want the people who are gospel artists who don't do that kind of music say, right. so anointing ain't on what we do, the presence of God ain't on what we do. But when you have been reared and grown in church and you're used to a certain sound and a flow, if that sound and flow is not in your music, it, it, is, it, is a, it, it hinders us from being able to get in that flow. I'm not saying you ain't got nothing on you, but what's on you ain't where I come from. So That's what, all. I need to hear that sound. And and I can respect that. You know, when I saw your post, I just put it up. I didn't give no commentary. I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. But I hear what <laughs> you're saying. I hear what you're saying. And I, I think it we can amazing. both. I think it was amazing. I almost was hoping. I said, well, I really enjoyed this. It was great entertainment. But if it was two hours, if it were two hours, I would say that first hour, Okay, now church folks, we anointed, but you know, we got to come with it. I want, we need bowling to have all of us as fly as they got all the mother was looking. And we would have just done that. I mean, I would invest in something like that. You know, and when I say invest, I mean, I'm seriously. I'm like, I would take my resources and I would say, even if I'm not on the stage, Please right. get Beverly Crawford up there. Please get Donnie McClurkin up there. Please get Byron. Let them have the experience because this is our night. This is the biggest night in gospel. Let's show the uh, uh, Grammys. Let's show the hip hop award. Let's show them that we have excellence and we don't have to compromise our morals and our principles for us to get the point across and to look professional. First of all, I'm not going to be pressed into the mold of, of, of the world anyway. I'm of it, but I'm not, I'm, I'm in it, but I'm not of it. So I'm supposed to come with something different anyway. I don't supposed to be just like you anyway. Even though with more global reach, what I'm saying, I'm still not coming over there. I'm taking the cross over, but I'm not compromising my morals and principles to impress you. You know, and I, then stand. I, I happen to have a whole lot of friends from the old gospel, like right. Kurt Carr and some other ones, and you sounding just like them. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> All of you guys say the same thing. At, at, <laughs> I'm, I'm not old school. Somebody just said I'm old school. I'm, Let me tell you something. I came up under 
uh, Walter Hawkins, James, James Moore, Daryl Coley. When I first heard Daryl Coley sing that hang on in there, and he did if my feet, I said, he too jazzy. I don't feel Jesus. And you know what? You know what uh what somebody said to me? They said, listen for about two more songs. <laughs> and when Daryl Coley got, I was on my face like, because when I first heard Vanessa Bell, I said, she churchy, but she too, I, I'm listening for amazing, great. They said, you got to open your mind. So they opened my mind. This was early 80s when I really started getting serious. Uh, and, and I was open. And then I remember hearing Dawkins and Dawkins and I was like, I went home and my kids weren't excited about my music. They weren't excited about Daryl Coley. They weren't excited about Vanessa. But when I put on Need to know, need to know, no. need to. No. I got. I said, okay, I gotta, I gotta get with the program. <laughs> I may not be saved. I don't know. Ah. <laughs> so I'm open, and I'm, I'm all for the change and the evolution of where we're going. But my thing is, let's bring the whole gospel. Let's bring the I, New Testament and the Old Testament. Let's I get agree. the Amplified Bible and the uh, 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 Living Bible. Let's bring all of it together and let's impact the people. Let's edify, let's encourage, let's build the people up. However you have to do it. Don may feel like that's how he's got to do it. I just, I'm trusting God to show him a more excellent way because I think we can bring it all. Now, I, I, I agree with that. That, I'm always, I'm never uh, either or, I'm always a both and. And right. I, I agree with that because I did miss that that sound, that that thing me too you know i i didn't mess it now it was good now because the way they closed that show out with lee andrew and that's a card oh that. my god now, I, now that gave me like i think i got saved again for just a <laughs> quick minute i may have got my holy ghost back yeah because, i forgot see, about that let's see what people don't know is lee andrew's throat the cardi's throat and um um crispel's throat that's the church that's the church that's it the listen <laughs> Let me tell you something. When I feel, I don't care what I'm dealing with. I can put on on either three of them, and there's several people in this industry. And let me tell you, it cuts through depression. It it, I could be angry about something, whatever. That is what I think I want to display on our biggest night in gospel. If you come over here and you depressed, listen. The spirit of suicide got to go when you listen. Not saying that the other stuff can't, but what I'm saying that thing is so powerful when you get a hold of what's called what breaks yokes is what. The anointing. And that's what I wanted the world to experience when we're going to decree and declare that this is the biggest night in gospel. Come on, let's bring out all the big guns. We yeah. would have had, now if they hadn't had Leandra and, and Zaccardi, I would have turned the TV off and went somewhere and probably got drunk. <laughs> okay, let's listen to what um, Sidney Scott, who's Ty Scott, he said, gospel is, oh. a, is a fabric that's woven together with many threads and platforms need to expand to compensate for the growth without losing the foundation. Now, I agree. Yeah. With that, and he said, "We saying so we could we could do both of them. They have Absolutely. to, and and you know the Stellas have sort of struggled with the Central City Productions has sort of struggled with this, been able to include all of what gospel is. I think they just it's now, a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Yolanda it's Adams, all encompassing. Yolanda Adams said something many years ago. She said there are many expressions of gospel, and we have not embraced them all. At the same yeah. time." Holding to the amazing grace, the Shirley Caesars, and all of those, you know, songs. Precious played, Lord, yeah. All of that, we can also embrace, you know, the new stuff that we hear. Now, I, what I notice is this, Ernest, like Maverick Cities does the new CCM type of thing, but in their live concerts, what busts through those, and what busts through, and their songs are great. But when Kurt brings that old gospel stuff and mix it in there, there is I think there should be a merger of, of what where we come from and the people we're going. That's what I think. Well, that's the name of your conference next year, the merge. The merge. <laughs> you you can do it because you're innovative, you're creative, and you're rich. So you probably could go ahead and merge the song together. This is the Let me get you off here. Don't be telling about my business. <laughs> the Lord is the Lord is speaking to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God! I'm yeah. glad you brought the conversation up because nobody else. I didn't, if somebody else did, I didn't see it. But I'm glad you brought yeah. the conversation up. But once again, I enjoyed James Fortune. Of course, yeah. I cl I clown him because suit was tight. You know, he hit me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, no, he's trying to keep you know. the skinny jean element. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Crossover. Hip-hop. Come on now. 
Yeah, but it was but it was good. And I yeah, love it was it. great. What's um um Ricky Dillard's musician that's really like a producer? Quad 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 quad, quad that's my little brother. I really enjoyed seeing we him. We all grew up together over there. Me, Quad, Byron Cage, Brent Jones, Keith Williams. We all came from that Ebenezer, uh, from that Ebenezer house, Doc. So, yeah, wow. them, them cats right there, man. But they 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 gonna change the world. When I say change the world, people that I can't even reach, these kids are gonna reach them, and that's what I'm. That's why I encourage and I empower. But I want to go places. But I never forget where I come from. My foundational teaching. It's what gives me my morals, my principles, my convictions. I'm not letting them go. So they can call me old school, call me what you want to. I'm never going to let go of what works for me. And so even with making this move and saying that I'm going to ma major in ministry and, and uh, minor in industry, it's mm -hmm. uh, semantic. It's talking, but I'm serious. I'm going to do more books. Well, let, let, me mm -hmm. let me ask you about that. Let me ask you about that. I'm going to tell you what I did. Because you know, I was going hard and strong. I, I was about to sign to your record label and everything. Yeah, I, I was. That. I was very strong. But then I got to when I started doing Larry Live, and I began to garner my own audience. I I said, you know, I I continue to release gospel music. I mean, I just released a uh, gospel CD. I mean, it's gospel, not yeah. It's, it's gospel. church. Yeah, and I I think this is this is just what how I feel. I feel. Um, but let me not go into that. Let me just say it like this. I agree with what you're saying and that we should merge, do what we did last night because it looked really good and made us look really good, but also reach back and, and bring that merger. That's that's what I, that's how I'm going to say that. That's what I think. Yeah. We and need that. Oh, 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 let's say this. Oh, oh, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I got off, off track. So when I started making gospel music just for my audience, and I didn't, you know, I, I have the ability to put it into the system to to chart and all of that. I didn't do that with any of my last two CDs was a redo of my old gospel music from 20 years ago. Yeah. I didn't do any of that. And the reason why I didn't, because I'm like, that's industry. I'm trying to minister to the people that follow me who are not connect and See? church. Is that what you're saying that you yes. want to say? On? Yeah. Like I would probably do less stuff you know in terms of for clickbait and and followers and all of that because a lot of them are just they're not really following you they're watching you they won't like the post but you see what i'm doing and so why even give them an audience why not just go appeal to the people that are showing up for what you need them to show up for they're booking you i do 40 something appearances a year um, and I'm talking, this is without a stellar nomination, without a stellar award, without a stellar performance. So that means there is a remnant of people out there that I'm somehow resonating with. I'm going to put my energy on those people and just stop. You know, my thing is, I had great 20 years, me and Kerry Douglas and Black Smoke, EPM, we had a great run. Yeah. I'm not going to be releasing any more full length CDs because people don't consume them. You spent almost six figures to record an album, and what do they buy? They yeah. buy the singles. It's called supply and demand. I'm not doing that anymore. So I made that statement two years ago, and Carrie got so mad. Don't you be telling your PR people. I said, I'm spending money. You're spending money. We're not seeing a return. I'm What's that called? Insanity? It's so insane. what I'm going to do is write more books. I'm going to do more worship symposiums. When I come to your church, I'm there two or three days building, working with your music department, that is just, I'm going to the backside of the desert because I feel like I can be more effective. Mm. And it's been wonderful. And you're going to still hear singles at radio, but I'm just, I'm not going to wait around for somebody to, you know, to tag me when I'm on a cane at 70. Okay, we, we change it back over to church. <laughs> you know, baby, do you think I'm sitting up here waiting on you to, to pay my bill? First of all, I've already started pivoting with my nonprofit, you know, uh, I'm doing a behavioral science uh, situation using all these degrees that I got. So I'm like, you don't really got a master divinity, a PhD, go over and use that. So during the pandemic, I start counseling people. That billing that I make a month, it's more than some people make in a whole year. Yeah. Well, I make in a month. So yeah. why most of the things when it comes to gospel, I give it away free anyway. So why be stressed? Why get in this whole cycle of, of oh, please let me in? You can have it. God bless you. Enjoy it. It's been amazing, but I'm out. <laughs>
Okay. Well, I think that's a great way to end it. And thank and thank you so much for um for coming over and sharing because I wanted everybody to hear out of your mouth. I put the post up, but I wanted them to hear out of your mouth an explanation. Uh, and I think it was a great explanation. Thank great. you for having me, Doc. All right, thank you so much. Okay, it looks like somebody else is in here that wants to talk. Radio station heads and executives that want I, I don't know if I want to do that. Maybe we can do that another time and, and have this conversation later on. There are other gospel artists that are in the chat. I see every last one of you guys. You heard it from Ernest Pugh, what he meant. And we're going to leave it at that. We'll come back another time and talk some more. Take care. God bless.